So. Oh, broadcast is now live. That big thing that jumps across the screen is usually a good indication of that we are live. What up, KNCI family? It's Jared Marshall, 105.1 KNCI. I do the midday talkie talk, and I am super excited to have Tennille Arts with me, who's going to be at our Country in the Park 2022. Hey, oh. thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to, to get to come and play for you guys. It's going to be a blast. I know. So you, we were talking earlier because that is obviously a hotel room because the, the, the molding up on the top and the, and the drapery, unless you're in a haunted Victorian house, is definitely a hotel room. So oh, yeah. uh, where are you at right now? Um, I'm in Vegas right now. We have a show here tonight. So yeah, always fun to get to come play in Vegas. <laughs> awesome. Who, who are you playing with uh, tonight? Um, it's just me. We're, just we're you? That's so cool. Show. Yeah. We're so, at? Where are you going to be? Um, it's a place called Gillies. It's in Treasure Island. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> no, they have an amazing breakfast buffet. Just letting you know, I'm a big buffet person when I go to Vegas. Treasure Island, they have an amazing breakfast buffet. Just putting it out there. Oh, man. You know what? I'm going to miss it because we fly out at like six in the morning tomorrow. So. I, that's the one thing that blows my mind for everybody always thinks the rock star life is out partying all night, jumping around, doing like throwing TVs out your window, which I know you will not do because you're so well behaved. Uh, but, but everybody's, but nobody realizes that you've got to get a lobby call at like four o'clock in the morning for a 6 a.m. flight. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely, uh, you go to bed in Vegas when you have a 4 a.m. <laughs> lobby call. <laughs> Exactly. And so, so everybody, people don't realize the, the, the hours that you guys have to put in jumping from market to market, city to city, show to show. There's, there's a lot of fun things you get to experience that nobody else does. But it was whenever you were writing those songs as a kid up in Canada and going to be, you know, this is going to be my career. Did you, did you realize the, the travel itinerary that was going to happen? Um, I think I like, I was always competing in like, um, talent shows and stuff. So I was like traveling around every weekend, but it wasn't, like this you know <laughs> flying to different cities across the country um yeah that's definitely a lot more than i thought it was going to be especially you know when you're visiting radio stations it's like going across the whole country and um early mornings and late nights but it's worth it <laughs> it's worth i mean you could be you could have a real job it's, it's one of those things where everybody's like yeah it's it's still it's still a good time isn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> Well, speaking of that, if you weren't doing music, if you weren't writing, you weren't doing that, what's something that maybe you would be doing that nobody else, that, that you know, what, what would you have done if you didn't play music? I don't really know. You know, I've, I've thought about that. I, I love, like, crafts and, um, you know, like, I bedazzle some stuff and make some clothes and different things like that. So, I don't know, maybe something in that realm. But um, I also really love hair and makeup. I like doing my own, but I don't know if I would like doing other people's. So, I don't know. I'd have to try out a few things i think <laughs> yeah the same, i say the same thing about being a parent i love my kids but i don't really want to do other uh, hang out with other people's kids yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> i can i can definitely relate to that as a parent um so with you so you said you'd be bedazzled you do some of those, those other things um if it wasn't if it's not music is there something in your life that you have done you've achieved that you've completed that you're super proud of something like wow like people wouldn't it, but it can't be music it can't be music is there something you'd be really excited about hmm Oh my gosh, my whole world <laughs> like revolves around music. Um, hmm. But it could have been like the bedazzled jacket or something like that, or your guitar or something. Like I that well, that I do you, have my um, my bedazzled guitar here. There you so. go. Okay, so one of the, so actually hold, bring, pull that up real quick. I want to see that real quick. Okay, so I I usually end the interview with this, but I'm I'm gonna jump to it right now. Show and tell. I always ask like around you something you can grab, especially with these Zoom video conf interviews things. Tell tell the story about your bedazzled guitar. So it was kind of a quarantine project. I actually I was in the UK when everything kind of like shut down, and I had planned to make this guitar to go with my last album because the the cover was pink and um i was like you know i want to have a cool guitar to play out on the road for all my summer shows and everything so when everything shut down not knowing that all of those shows were eventually going to get canceled um but i just was like this is a great way to pass time it's like a very like tedious like very um it just took a really long time. So I got to work on it for like two months and um, yeah, I love it. It still comes with me everywhere. I figured I would bring it to Vegas because it's sparkly and, <laughs> and it's Vegas. <laughs> um, yeah. It's just one of those things that I've always wanted to do. I've actually made a couple other ones since, and I, I just love doing it. So 
are there any friends in your in the music industry that have been like, can you make me one? Like any of your friends? Like seriously? Um, Mackenzie Porter actually messaged me and she was like, "What did you use? I want to bedazzle my her like fiddle." So I don't know. Maybe she'll have a bedazzled fiddle someday. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, that is that is super cool. And uh, that <laughs> I know I love her. That that's really that would be actually really neat. Now I'm, I'm sure you are absolutely a nightmare to the lighting crew though. Whenever you're actually on there, when they throw the lights down, like the whole crowd is like. Ah! It's like the it, scene from uh, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark when they open up the Ark of the Covenant and everybody's like, <laughs> and all the lights and everything. That's just, uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's quite the it sparkles really good in the light, but um, hopefully not too bright for people. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, you need to have warnings on your shows when you have yeah. like, please wear sunglasses during the first like thirty rows. Have sunglasses available for whenever the the lights shine on the uh, on our guitar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So you're going to you're going to be here uh, country in the park. It's two days this year. It, it, this is a 20 year concert that's been going on. It's been going on for 22 years. It's two days. Uh, we have uh, night one night two. You're going to be there night two with Cole Swindell, Russell Dickerson, uh, Lauren Elena, Jamison Rogers, Drew Parker and more. Uh, it's get Cal Expo. It's it's really one of our favorite events that we've we, we do here at KNCI out here in Sacramento, which is, you know, it, it, it's I don't know. We've we've had a lot of amazing acts that have come through every single year, and with it being twenty two years of, you know, Country of the Park two nights twenty twenty two, we're excited about all the twos for some reason. Um, so, for you when you're on tour, what is a guilty pleasure for you? What's what should we have ready for you as a guilty pleasure when you're out on the road? So when you come into your trailer backstage, we have it ready for you, so you feel like you're at home. Oh my gosh. Um... Well, let's see. I def- I always have a shot of whiskey right before I go on stage. So that's <laughs> that's what necessary. Kind? What kind? Um, you know what? I've kind of like tried a bunch of different things recently. Well, on the road, it's super easy to find like Maker's Mark or something like that. Yeah. Like I'll drink that. Um, but if I want to get fancy, um, like Basil Hayden or um, Angel's Envy, those those are pretty good. <laughs> All right. And so how about something about you that whenever you meet somebody new, uh, what's, what's something that would surprise them about you? Um, I am like super chill. Like I I really, my emotions, like most people, when I write with people, they think that I hate like everything or that I just don't like the song or something, but I'm just like, I'm a very internal like processor. Like I have to just kind of like sit there and take things in and you know i think a lot so um yeah i genuinely love everybody but i'm always just kind of in my head (laughs) no you you, you're processing things yeah no i I, i'm the same way i can i completely relate i'll spend more time listening than well i i talk i never shut up but still i i I listen i I try to process things so i can figure out like what's going on or or really you know i don't know where to go with the conversation but i I try to listen too so no it's good i appreciate that i appreciate you processing stuff (laughs) Um, (laughs) so if you had the opportunity uh to instantly become an expert in something you are an amazing guitar player you're a songwriter you have you how many instruments do you play um, I play guitar, um, piano, and that's that's about it. That's I'll about it. Okay. About if you could be, if you could be an expert in something instantly, anything, anything at all, what would it be? Oh my gosh, an expert. Mm-hmm. That would make your life easier, or maybe more difficult. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would probably like want to learn to fly a plane and be like super good at that, and then I could just have my own private plane and fly everywhere by myself <laughs> that's that's cool there, I mean, there's so many people in nashville there's so many artists like you know whether it be you know dirks bentley or even dustin lynch is learning how to fly a plane right now or at least, at least he was i mean i don't know if he's continuing to do that i mean uh, randy hauser was doing that so a lot of artists out of nashville that's that's that a lot of them love to do that i mean i think it's like just fascinating you know the whole idea of flying and um you know, I'm always on planes, so it's funny that I would even like think about, um, you know, spending more time in a plane. But uh, yeah, I just think that'd be something really cool and definitely something that's a little scary, you know, so I would like to do that. Well, when you're not flying a plane and you're sitting in the back seat uh, or in the in the passenger area, what do you what do you do when you're on the plane? Do you take a nap? Do you watch a movie? Do you read a book? Are you writing music? What are you doing? Um, I'm usually napping. I can actually nap like anywhere, like airport floors, 
in the chair, like, um, yeah, I'm really, really good at sleeping in random places. So uh, I, I'm usually sleeping or watching, you know, I usually fly like Southwest. So I'm usually just like scrolling through their movies and I've like seen all of them. So I'm just like trying to find something that I haven't seen before. Um, or I usually try to like download something before I get on the flight. <laughs> Speaking of Southwest, I really appreciate what they're doing now where you can actually uh, text message now. I, I appreciate yes. that. I know. I um, thankfully have flown so much that I get the free Wi-Fi too. So oh. I just, yeah. <laughs> that, that is the, you're living the dream. Seriously. <laughs> Get, the, get those flight benefits. That's that, oh man, that's awesome that you're getting to keep those and the label's not taking those from you. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I get to keep them myself. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Um, hmm. uh, so you grew up in Canada. I mm-hmm. find this is, is an awesome story that when you were getting your start and you're writing music and you're performing, there were Canadian record labels that obviously wanted to sign you. Uh, of course. But you held off. You you held out because you wanted to sign with somebody in Nashville, and you wanted to you wanted to go to Nashville. And that, what what was the thinking behind that? And also, where did that kind of confidence come came come from? Because you got to figure a lot of people in your shoes would have just jumped right at it. But being able to hold back and, and wait, where did that come from? You know, I think from a really early age, I was always watching like what other people had done. You know, and. Um, I think Shania Twain was a great, um, you know, inspiration to me because she was somebody who was from a small town in Canada and she really got her start in Nashville. And I just figured, you know, if I'm going to stay in Canada, I would probably either move to Toronto or Vancouver, but neither one of those places are like really a crazy, like country music hub. And I started going to Nashville when I was 15 years old and I was just like, this is, you know, where the best songwriters are and this is where they come. And so many Canadian artists also go down to Nashville to write their records and and to create them. So I just figured, like, why not go to the source of, like, where all of these creative people are? And, you know, it's going to be obviously challenging because you are like a teeny tiny fish in a giant pond when you go from, you know, a small town where you're the biggest you know, yeah. singer from that town. But when you go to Nashville, it's kind of a reality check and you have to really work 10 times harder. And I just figured if I'm going to do it, I might as well go all the way. So that's why I went to Nashville. <laughs> and how old were you when you went, when you up and moved? Uh, I moved when I was 21. <sighs> wow. Yeah. That, I mean, that, I mean, I guess around that age, people are in college and upping and moving away, but they're usually in college and they have that support system of, I don't know, a, a, a dining hall and dorms <laughs> yeah, compared to going to my own age. It was like really challenging when I first got there, but I just went to a ton of writers rounds and, and tried to introduce myself to people and ask them to write. And uh, that's kind of how I built my uh, career, you know, starting out from the ground up. <laughs> what, uh, where did you perform your first time performing on Broadway in Nashville? Where was it? Uh, I played at Tootsie's one time. You played Tootsies? I did, yeah. Nice. They were having a, a fundraiser, and uh, I got to play in the upstairs area, um, and it was so cool. I'm like, you know, Terry Clark kind of like had her start there and all that, so I was like, this is pretty cool. <laughs> I took my, uh, my, my my daughter's going to college next year. We did a, a college visit to Nashville to look at some schools out there, and uh, she obviously is not 21 yet, and I may have snuck her into a certain place in on on Broadway to sing karaoke uh, for her. So I was like, you're doing, if you're going to be in Nashville, it's going to be your Nashville debut. And I got her in and she did karaoke and she, she, she rocked it. It's it's one of those things when you first, the first time performing there, you got to, it's, it has a special place in your heart, doesn't it? Oh yeah. I mean, Broadway is like, you just hear about all of the the country artists that have performed there and um, you know, like other venues like the Bluebird and things like that. It's like, you just want to step foot in there and get to sing and, um, yeah, people are still discovered in different ways every single day. So it's definitely uh, something that I think a, a lot of artists still do to this day. So with you at such a young age, going into music, knowing that's what you're going to do, 21, moving to Nashville, 
Was there something that your your parents or somebody that was influential in your family that uh, they taught you at a young age that you still hold to this day, whether it be a saying, a mantra, uh, just is there something that you learned, it, just anything really, something you learned from, from one of those influential people when you were younger that you still kind of like motivate you and you hold to this day? Um, I mean, my mom definitely like shared with me a lot of different things. Um, going all the way back, like I think this is from Bambi, but it's like if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Um, I think that's really important, especially because Nashville is a really small town. Like if you go around like running your mouth about somebody or, or something like that, you know, it gets around and it can get back to you really easily. So um, try not to, you know, bash anybody or anything like that. Um, and then this was actually, this is a quote that I pretty much live by every day because I'm a very nervous person and it takes like a lot of like for me to like go and do things. And um, I saw this movie, it's called um, We Bought a Zoo. Yeah. It's very random. And um, the quote is like, you can do anything with 20 seconds of insane courage. So I just kind of do that. Anytime I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm just like 20 seconds of insane courage, do it. And yeah, it's helped me a lot. I But it's it's amazing how little things like that are so true and they can really just get you over the hump of actually be like, uh, you know what? I'm just going to do this. And it's pretty yeah. cool, especially for somebody who goes on stage, who performs and who, who does what you do to me to still kind of need that little, that little push at times is it's pretty, it's pretty interesting whether it's going out on stage and doing a song or meeting that celebrity that you've always, or meeting that person who you idolize and you want to ask them to do a writer to, to, to do a writing session with, or even if you're a person asking that person out on a date for the first time, just that 20 seconds of insane courage. That's awesome. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to remember that because of all the things I saw from that movie, that wasn't the thing that I brought <laughs> that, that, that it, was, it was awesome. It was animals and Matt Damon and whatnot. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Tanil, you're going to be joining us once again, uh, Country in the Park, two days this year, which is really cool. You're going to be there for day two. It's a Sunday night, Cole Swindell, Russell Dickerson, Lauren Elena, Jamison Rogers, Drew Parker. Um, just a few more questions and I'll let you go. Uh, I always I always like to ask, uh, tea or coffee, which, one's, which one are you more addicted to? Um, tea. I tried to stop drinking coffee, so... <laughs> Oh, there, there was a problem there, wasn't it? Well, yes. And also I get like so jittery that it's like, it's a problem. <laughs> How do you take your tea? Do you just stick with a little sugar, a little lemon, a little, well, uh, just a little bit of honey. That's it. Oh, all right, cool. Yeah. And then also what is your most used emoji when you text? Um, probably the little, like this guy with the little hands. <laughs> I don't know. That's always my like, oh, I'm excited. <laughs> hey. Yeah. So, no, that's cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's always awesome getting to see you. So excited you're going to be joining us for Country in the Park, uh, especially while you're out on the road. And, and like, are you excited to be back on the road? I figure after COVID and, and this, the, you know, the quarantines and all that kind of stuff, being back out has got to be nice. Yes. Uh, seriously, I mean, when we got back into rehearsals, everybody was just like smiling ear to ear. Even though it was a long day, we were like so excited to be able to put together a show and get to kind of cater it specifically towards the upcoming shows. And, um, you know, just knowing that these are probably going ahead, <laughs> all of them is just very exciting. And, um, you know, I there was a while there where I didn't get my hopes up for anything, you know, because I just thought everything was going to get canceled. And, um so far, so good with all these things coming up. So I'm very excited. Well, we're excited to have you. Uh, it's going to be a great time at uh, Cal Expo. Country in the Park, it's May, uh, May. I think it's, I'm trying to remember which one. You're May 6th, 15th, 14th and 15th, May 14th and 15th. You're going to be there on the uh, Sunday, May 15th. And so, yeah, no, I really appreciate you uh, joining us. And make sure to follow Tanil on all of our social medias. I'm feeling it's a, it's at Tanil Arts. There it is right there. Yes. And uh you have a great, well, I'm, I don't want, I don't want to enjoy your show tonight. I don't know if you're allowed to say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy you. your show tonight in so Vegas. Excited. It's going to be good. All right. Are you going to at least gonna get to gamble a little bit while you're in town? Maybe. I don't know. I'm terrible at gambling, um, but the guys in my band are pretty good. So maybe I'll just be like the little bystander. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Just follow, just find the person who's winning the most and just do what they do. That's what I yes. do. Yes. That's how I, I pretty much have gotten through life doing that. Hey, you look like you're doing very well in life. I'm just going to follow you and do whatever you yeah. do. <laughs> awesome. It's a deal. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening.
Thank you so much. You too. Bye. Bye.